Good morning. I am going to preach again uh, another sermon for my class. My audience is the same, plus the media. And um, my sermon scripture comes from First Peter, verses one, chapter one, verses seventeen through twenty-one. It's been already read. And the sermon title is, We were ransomed with the precious blood of Christ so that we can model Christ's ethics to the world. Shall we pray? May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Lockdown due to COVID-19 has given us some hint of what a prison may look like. Now imagine a certain Mr. Rashti is locked down in a prison for 30, 40 years or more because of a crime he has committed. And he is sentenced to death. But all of a sudden, a certain Mr. Sov who is not even a family member, walks into the prison, flings the prison door wide open. He proceeds to break the handcuffs from Mr. Rashte's hands and the shackles from his feet. And then he declares to Mr. Rashti, you were set free. Get out and go. Mr. Sov does not run away. Instead, he stays in prison. He takes the place of Mr. Rashti. He is sentenced to death and executed. Now imagine Mr. Rashti, who is set free, doesn't want to go away. He keeps lingering around the prison. He still wants to live confined in prison because he is so used to that life that he cannot break away from it. This story is about you and me. Mr. Sov, the executed innocent, is Jesus Christ. Sov is a French word which means to save. And as you know, Jesus means to save. Mr. Rashti, the convict set free by grace, is you and me. Rashti is also in French. It means ransom, which also means redeemed, rescued, released, delivered, restored, liberated, set free, traded. That is, your death and mine has been traded for life. Before I explain to you how this applies to you and me, let me first take you to the Roman Empire. The writer of the epistle of 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 17 uh, to 21 is surprised to see Christians of his time who lived in, in Rome and in Asia Minor still wanted to live like slaves to sins, despite the fact that they, they were already set free by Christ. Peter is reminding them that they don't have to live like people locked down, like people who cannot let go of their old life from which they have already been ransomed. He echoes also the exile event. 
He reminds them about the life that Israel lived while in exile in Babylon, where they were confronted to new foreign cultures. They were facing pressure to espouse new cultures and foreign gods. Most of them did just that. They espoused the new cultures and foreign gods that interfered with their belief in Yahweh, the God of Israel. They even forgot that they were set apart of God, that God had a special mission for appointing them and for calling them God's own people. The reason for their being set apart was for them to model Yahweh to the rest of the people they encountered. So now let's talk about Christians. We've been just talking about Israel in Babylon. Now, when they, they have become Christians, that is the Israelites and the other people, the other nations, which they, they have called Gentiles. Now, while in the Roman Empire, which included also Asia Minor, Peter realizes that Christians are challenged just like Israelites in, in Babylon. They are chained. They are chained in the Hellenistic culture and other foreign gods of the place where they are locked down. He warns them and goes like, though now you are like exiles whose own values are constantly endangered by the culture in which you were forced to live. You Christians, you must hang on to God's priority. Like prisoners fred because your ransom has been paid in full. You Christians, you are free from the shackles. You are free from the shackles that bound you to your old futile ways. You are free. Now Peter is telling you and me that like Mr. Rashti, who was locked down, sentenced to death, but who is set free, who is set free, his place taken by Mr. Saul, who is executed for our freedom. We Christians should live like people who are aware that we have been redeemed, not in exchange of any perishable thing, such as money, animals, or materials, but with the precious blood of Christ. When we know how it has caused someone's life for us to be who we are today, we can thus live accordingly and model the life of the one who died for us. Likewise today, as Christians, we are set apart for God's purposes. We are expected to live a new and holy life of, in harmony with that of Christ, but not to give in to the pressures of our current surrounding cultures. Are we designing our conduct according to God's priority? Or God's priorities, I mean. Are we willing to abandon our old sinful ways and embrace the ways of God? What are your foreign gods in mind? Does the Holy Spirit remind you and me of the foreign gods we might have espoused while in our lockdown? Foreign gods can include lies, anger, greed, arrogance, 
adultery, and all that the Spirit can remind you. Are we willing to leave those behind the, 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 lock, the behind the bars, behind the locked doors, or we want to just stay in? Actually, Peter and Jesus would be surprised to see that you and me, who have been set free, we don't want to live like people who are free. We still want to live handcuffed. We still want to live in shackles or locked down in cells. That is, to walk in sinful ways. Peter is inviting you and me to live a life of integrity, free from corruption, but a life that gives true witness of hope, love, and good works to the world around it. I mean, to the world around us. I know that Peter was writing or talking, addressing to people who had already converted to Christianity, who were believers. But I want to tell you that even if you are not yet a believer, this message is inviting you to abstain from sinful ways and follow the model of Christ. Because living in sin is just like living in a prison. Basically, Christ has set us free from the bondage of sin, from filthy life to clean lifestyle, from our cultural complacence, from status quo of manipulative structures that exploit out others, other people. I would add that we are set free even from the bondage of poverty. Yes. Are you still in poverty? Are you doing something about it? Of course, Christ picks up from trash, washes, and puts you at the table of honor, just as he, he did to me. I am actually from a poor country, a poor family, but Christ helped me to lift me up today. I'm here in Washington, D.C. in a very expensive school. Not only this one, I've been also at St. Paul. It's all because of Christ, because I've been set free. So. We don't want to remain in chains again, do we? We don't want to live in shame again, do we? So what shall we do then? Peter wants us to remember Christ's high sacrifice and to live like people for whom the highest price ever had already been paid in full. To live like people who have been set free from sinful life. He wants us to be imitators of Christ, like people who do not give in to the pressures of our predominant surrounding corrupt cultures. He wants us to hang on to God's priorities. And what are God's priorities? It's whatever pleases God. Even if I'm not comfortable with it, even if you're not comfortable with it, but as long as it pleases God, this is God's priority. And this is what we are called to hang on to. May the Lord of the Holy Spirit help you and me as we strive to please God instead of ourselves. May God bless this word. Amen.